Hey guys, welcome to Quinian's Budget Crafts. So this was the build selected by the patrons. It is a ruined keep. Going to do this whole bottom piece here as one floor, and then the top piece as the roof or second story, whatever, over the back section of the building. It is 12 this direction and 16 this direction. And then the top floor is 12 by 8. So you know the drill. Go ahead and cut those measurements out of some EPS. If you want to do a grid, put some uh, ready board on there and put a grid on it. I'm not doing a grid on this because I think I can get some pretty good stone effect out of the EPS by itself. Alright, we're going to need to cut a bunch of bricks out for this. Or I guess I should say blocks. These are not bricks. These are very big blocks. Any scrap pieces you have left over, this is a good use for them. Just going to make square strips and then cut those squares into little rectangles. Now you could cut all these out with a ruler and a knife, but I've got this cheap little hot wire, so I'm going to use that because i got to cut a whole bunch of these things. But if you have some old leftover foam that's got spray paint or Mod Podge or whatever on it, that's fine. Just go ahead and cut that too. Okay, now that you've got about 50 million sticks here, go ahead and move your fence or adjust your measurement to twice the width of the bricks. And then run all your sticks through. You can get away with doing about four at a time smoothly. If you have one that's got a torn up end on it, just try and trim the end as straight as possible and then continue trimming like normal. So to glue all of these on, it's probably best if you use tacky glue because that way you have some room to adjust if you get things on and decide you want to move it. Also, it's best to start in the corners, and then if you have any weird gaps or anything, just make a little piece to fill the gap. That way you don't have your corners all offset. So put a little tacky glue on there and build up your corner about two or three bricks high, whatever is a good starting point for you. The overall wall will be three bricks tall on the inside, so it would be four on the outside. Once all your corners are taken care of, go ahead and fill in the wall. If you have little gaps, you can either try to squish them together and make one large gap that you can fill, or just leave tiny gaps between them. Making one large gap and then filling it is what I ended up doing on the short walls because it just didn't line up right. Normally I would do it to where the wall and the roof are attached to each other so you can take them off and leave the building's footprint. But in the case of this thing, it's so big, the wall height's not going to be enough to get in the way, but it'll still give a really cool effect of being in the fort. You can still reach in there and move your mini around. So now I did do something stupid here, I thought it would be easier for later, and I built the second floor's wall three blocks high as well, and then was going to cut off two blocks and use that for the roof on the front portion, and it kind of didn't work very well. So either just go with a full super tall uh, upper floor here, or build it only one block tall to start with because you're going to put the crenellations around the top. To do the crenellations, cut a bunch of blocks in half, stand one block up on the corner, Put a little half block next to it, put another standing block, and then just repeat that all the way around. Of course, you guys know I love my magnets, so that's what we're doing to make these two floors stick to each other. Poke a hole with the glue gun, stuff a magnet in, and then when you put the magnet in, put a little glue over the top of the magnet and then smooth it out with the tip of the glue gun so it's pretty well encased in there. Alright, so the map shows that this corner is missing, so just get a handful of your building and tear chunks off. The more random you tear it, the better. If you want, you can even separate some bricks to where there's a, the brick that was over it is overhanging out into the air now. Alright, so here's where I went ahead and separated the walls there, and then put the crenellations back on where I separated it. You'll see why this was a bad idea in a little bit. For the hole in front of the staircase, make sure you measure out where that wall around the staircase is supposed to go. Mark that, and then kind of do a jagged cut with your knife so that you have somewhere for it to break. Same thing with the other two sets of stairs, just go ahead and mark that off. Cut out that little section of wall and go ahead and put your crenellations all the way around. In this case I just used little half bricks. For the roof covering the front section, I just cut another piece of XPS to fit it and then took the piece that I cut off of the other one and wrapped it around this one. After I cut the bottom layer off because I didn't want it that high. Go ahead and do the magnets on that one too. And then rip out the hole in the wall that's on that one too. Aside from the hole in the wall, there's also a hole in the roof where it looks like there's trees growing or something. 
So let's go ahead and rip that section out too. Not the whole wall, just the roof. I figured if the rest of this thing is literally falling apart, there's no way the door survived. So just go ahead and use your fingernail and tear some of the bricks around where the door is supposed to go. And we'll lay some broken wood and stuff on the inside when we do details. This map shows a whole lot of walls on the inside. That would be a little bit cluttered to me, but go ahead and lay in a couple of them. The ones dividing the room in half, and then the ones going down the hallway a little bit. That's one of those death trap hallway things where you go in there and you can't really do anything about the archers, but they can shoot you. So, yeah, do those walls. So with that death hallway, do it three blocks long. And then on your other blocks, what you're going to do is take them and cut them at a 60 degree angle. For two of them, you cut one side. And then for one of them, you cut both sides. Then you stack them on there like this. So that now the archers on the inside have plenty of room to angle back and forth and stuff. But anybody in the hallway have a tiny little slit they can't really work with. If you use any sort of tactics type stuff in your games, these are really good for blocking line of sight for certain enemies while your PCs can still do things. Or the other way around, unlucky PC. So for that staircase on the very back, take a bunch of blocks and stack them up how you did the wall where you're offsetting them. Basically you're making three platforms. One that's three blocks, one that's two blocks, and one that's only one block. That'll give you a three block tall staircase you can glue to the wall in the bottom floor and it comes flush with the top of the wall. Then do another one of those that's only two blocks and one block and glue that to the hole you made for the staircase. And that way, when you stack them together, you can actually see a full set of stairs going all the way through that's big enough to put a mini on, but you can still take the building apart without having to worry about something breaking or sticking out weird or anything like that. So to put a little battle damage on this thing, you go through and break the corners off the crenellations and make some holes. If you've got one of these dental picks or maybe a sharp pair of tweezers or a needle, just go through and make some scrapes and divots and, you know, just tear it up, but make it random. Don't, don't make any sort of patterns anywhere. I also figured that dragons and large beasts and things exist in D&D &D and many other tabletop games. So a couple of the, the classic three claw scratches all the way across would look pretty cool. So this right here is what happens when you don't measure properly. You end up with an overhang. Now, I could just take that off and recut it, and it's that's simple enough to do. You can figure out how to do that. It's also very boring to watch. So instead, when we do the details, I'll show you how to fudge that. In the meantime, we can fudge it a little bit by breaking some of that off. The place that's going to show the most and also be the hardest to hide with details is going to be the corner. So if you break that corner off where you've got the overhang, it kind of blends in. You don't really notice the difference quite as much. Don't forget to do a little bit of battle damage on the top floor roof thing. Just try not to weaken it too much because it doesn't have any supports under it. And like I said, the map shows a whole bunch of walls in here, dividing this thing up into all kinds of sections. I think that would get super cluttered, and for me, that would be annoying. So if you want to block those off, you can put the walls, but I would recommend just using scatter terrain like bookshelves and stuff. The map is also showing a whole bunch of doors, but like I said, I don't think any door would have survived whatever happened to do this to the keep. So we'll just put in like broken doors and pieces of wood everywhere when we do the details. So I looked at the map a little more and realized that those two staircases on the upper section's roof are not to go into the lower section's roof, they're to go into the lower section, the front portion. So not a problem, it'll be alright. Just go ahead and cut out some holes for those. The map does show that the lower section staircase thingies are wood, so we'll do that after Mod Podge. Just go ahead and cut those holes out. And cut out a little section of the center where that wall is, so that you have stairs to get down to the front section. Okay, so go ahead and clean everything up with a vacuum. You do want to use a vacuum here, though, because the uh, little styrofoam balls that go everywhere are not going to do you any favors when you put the Mod Podge and paint on. Plus, if you want, you can actually use the vacuum as a sculpting tool. Just dig it in and scrape wherever you decide you need a little bit more damage or details or whatever it is you're looking for. And of course, make sure to vacuum out all the cracks and crevices and holes and stuff you made. For the paint mixture in the Mod Podge, I don't want straight black, but I also don't have a big bottle of the stuff called pavement, 
So I'm going to mix black and pewter almost equal parts. And then just a little bit of water. And then half of the entire mixture is Mod Podge. You're going to want to wear a glove for this part unless you don't mind caking your hand in Mod Podge and paint. So go ahead and completely Mod Podge the wall and the floor where the rubble is going to go. And then grab a piece of the stuff you broke off, roll it around in your hand and paint it all up. And then stick it down where the rubble's supposed to be. I mean this is actually glue after all so there's no reason that won't work. If the big blocks of rubble are too blocky, you can grab some fish rocks. I still have a cup full of these ones we painted up for using on the rubble walls. And just put them down, add a little glue, they'll stick. Any that fall out, that's fine. We can always do more stuff with detailing later. Alright, go ahead and get that all coated in your Mod Podge and paint and give it a full two days to dry. Which is why we're going to have to pick up the details next week. As always, if you guys would like to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon or Coffee. If you do support on Patreon, you'll get votes in future builds. But either way, thank you for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, share, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you on the next one.